okay, okay. Hello, everybody. Paquito de Rivera here. Well, here with the collection, with my toys collection. <laughs> I got a, a lot of fun playing these instruments. Let's talk about doublers. I am not a doubler. I, I don't call myself a doubler because doublers are people like Lawrence Feldman or Roger Rosenberg or Eddie Daniels who learned to play the trombone just for playing a gig with Sexteto La Playa in Puerto Rico many years ago. Something for, for Barry Rogers uh, was a great trombone. And the king of all doublers, which is a guy you know, he's insane, from Planet Mars, called Scott Robinson. He even played this instrument with strength. It's supposed to be impossible to do that. This is called the Oficlaide, figle in Spanish. It was used in, in uh, Cuban traditional music. I believe it was, uh, uh, it was used as a tuba. It's, it, it is a tuba, you know. And, uh, Hector Berlioz was the last composer who used this instrument before the uh, the valve. <laughs> what a crazy instrument, right? Uh, it's supposed this instrument was supposed to be the grandfather of the bass clarinet and the grandfather of the saxophone also, invented by Adolf Sax. So, like the great philosopher Friedrich, Friedrich Nietzsche, or Nietzsche, I, I don't know if I pronounce it right, without music, life would be a mistake. So that's why my father gave me a saxophone, and enlightened me the wonderful path of music. He played this tenor saxophone, he was uh, a classical saxophone player, and uh, he was uh, representative of the Semmer Company, but in Havana in, in the 40s and 50s. But for some reason, he always played his Martin tenor, which is the instrument here. It's a Martin tenor from 1943, like in the picture back there. <laughs> This is an old uh, Lauton, Lauton mouthpiece, like the one that the great Josh Coleman used to play. This is a seven star B Lauton. And of course, a Van Doren Reed number three. I, I use Van Doren's number three in, in all my instruments. So, as I was saying, my father gave me a soprano sax in 1953. He imported from the Sermon Company in. Uh, in Paris. So he gave me this soprano, and ever since I have tried to learn how to play. This is a wonderful chord instrument. It's, it's very few of them around in the world these days. The Selmer chord soprano. <laughs> discovered the wonderful Yamaha 
62. A straight soprano. It's a, it's a lot more comfortable to play, you know, that, and that's a small thing. <laughs> so, with this, I recorded many uh, recordings around New York and around the world. The intonation of this, this instrument is, is unbelievable for a soprano. The soprano is, a, is an instrument very hard to play in tune, but uh, this, uh, this Yamaha Soprano 62 make your, your life a little better. For some reason, they stopped making this model for many years. I don't know why. I asked them once, why did you stop playing, building that instrument? Such a wonderful instrument. The best soprano ever made, in my opinion. So now they're making the soprano, the, this, uh, the 62 again. father gave to me in 1953. This is a similar melody. I learned from Jimmy He that the soprano is a small instrument. You are not supposed to play with a big mouthpiece. Why, why do you need that such a, uh, a big mouthpiece to play such a small instrument if you have a microphone there? I and mean, even if you don't have it, you know, the, that the beautiful sound of the soprano, you can get it better if you have a smaller mouthpiece. This is a sermon letter D. 